Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you 10 of my all-time favorite soup recipes. I hope you enjoy it and let's go get to my kitchen and start cooking. To get us started off today, we are making this cheesy chicken enchilada soup. So on my cutting board right here, I'm just going to dice up one onion into smaller pieces. Now that I'm through with that, over to my large Dutch oven on the stove, I'm pouring a tablespoon of olive oil in there. Once my oil is hot, I'm adding the onion. Stir the onion around until it starts to get soft. Now it's time to add in our seasoning. So you'll just wanna add in about a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon and a half of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, and then give this a really good stir. And then after that, go ahead and add in a tablespoon of minced garlic, give it another good stir, and then you'll be adding in your five cups of chicken broth, and then bring the chicken broth up to a boil. Over to my countertop, I have one cup of masa in this measuring cup. This is what it looks like right here. You are going to slowly pour the masa into two cups of water and make sure you whisk it while you do pour it in just so it is nice and smooth in the end. Back over to our soup, you're going to pour in that masa mixture right now, along with one can of red enchilada sauce. After that, go ahead and add in a little under a pound of Velveeta. I did cube my Velveeta into smaller pieces. Once you bring your soup up to a boil, add in the two cups of cooked shredded chicken. I cooked my chicken up in the Instant Pot and then shredded it from there, but you could use a rotisserie chicken or whatever you like. And then I also added in one can of drained and rinsed white beans. I let this simmer on my stove for about 30 minutes covered. I did stir it frequently just so nothing stuck to the bottom of the pot. And then here is what it looks like completely finished. I topped mine with plenty of cheese, avocado, avocado, sour cream, cherry tomatoes, and these tortilla strips. This is by far one of my all-time favorite enchilada soups. It was particularly cold on this day, so that called for some lasagna soup. I'm just going to begin by adding my one pound of some mild Italian sausage to my large pot with a tablespoon of some hot olive oil in it. You could really use any type of sausage you like. You could even use ground beef for this recipe, kind of whatever you like. After I added my sausage in, I just added a couple cloves of some minced garlic with one diced up white onion. I'm just going to cook this sausage completely through. Now that my sausage is browned and nice and cooked, I'm just going to be removing all of the excess grease. If you've been on my channel for a while and watched some of my previous videos, you've probably seen me do this, but I like to just twirl a paper towel around my pot until all of the grease is removed and it is just easy cheesy. Now to get our seasonings on, I'm just adding a half a teaspoon of some crushed red pepper flakes, two teaspoons of dried parsley, a half a teaspoon of some dried oregano, and a teaspoon of dried basil. You'll also want to add in two tablespoons of some tomato paste, 24 ounces of marinara sauce. You could really use any type of marinara sauce you like. I chose to use the Prego. Seven cups of some vegetable broth, and you're going to want to bring this up to a boil. You can't really tell, but once my soup started to boil, I went ahead and added my nine lasagna noodles in, and I made sure to break the lasagna noodles up into smaller pieces. You're going to stir this occasionally and let your noodles cook until they are to the softness that you like them to be. While we do have our noodles cooking, I'm going to go ahead and work on our cheese mixture. So into the smaller size bowl, I added one cup of some cottage cheese, or you could choose to use ricotta cheese, whatever your preference is, a half a cup of mozzarella, half a cup of Parmesan, and a teaspoon of some dried parsley flakes. Give this a really good stir. Mm -hmm. 
after my soup was cooked, we just placed it into bowls and then I put a little scoop of the cheese mixture right in the center. That cheese mixture will melt down and get gorgeous. But we love making this lasagna soup in my family just because it's such a fun twist on regular lasagna. If you've never made lasagna soup, I definitely recommend you making this recipe. I just serve this alongside of a big side salad. I am so happy that it's getting to be soup season because I could eat this tortellini soup all of the time. So to begin, in my Dutch oven, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil. To the oil, I added one diced up white onion along with a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary. I let the onion get soft for about five minutes and then it is time to add in 28 ounces of petite diced tomatoes at this point followed by 15 ounces of tomato sauce. And then for the seasonings, I added in a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon of dried basil, and then plenty of salt and pepper. Next, you'll be adding in four cups of chicken broth with a half a cup of heavy cream. If you don't wanna add in the heavy cream, you certainly don't have to. I gave this a really good stir and then I brought it up to a boil, then I dropped it down to a simmer, and then I let this simmer covered on my stove for about 20 minutes. I did stir it frequently while it was simmering though. Now that it's finished simmering, my house was smelling so, so good at this point. It's time to add in 20 ounces of cheese tortellini. I used this frozen bag of cheese tortellini from my store. And then you are going to let your tortellini simmer for about 12 to 15 minutes or until it is completely cooked. I let it simmer uncovered. After the tortellini is cooked, the very last thing you will do is add in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I do have my heat off at this point. Give it a really good stir to melt the cheese down and then it's ready to serve. Here's my big bowl of soup. This soup is so, so amazing. It is rich and delicious. By far one of my all-time favorite soups in the fall. Even my little daughter loves it. She was trying to give me some of her food on her plate to be silly on that night. Now we're making this new minestrone soup recipe. My daughter absolutely devoured this one and this is for all of my meatless meal friends. So I'm going to begin by chopping up one zucchini, two stalks of celery, two medium carrots, and one white onion. Over to my Dutch oven, or you could use a large pot. I have two tablespoons of some hot olive oil in there. I added all the veggies that we chopped up along with a little dash of some salt. I'm going to stir these vegetables all together to get coated in the oil, and I'm going to let these vegetables soften for about eight minutes. After those eight minutes, you'll want to add in your 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes, or you could use diced tomatoes, whatever your preference is, 14 ounces of some tomato sauce, one drained and rinsed can of some kidney beans, five and a half cups of vegetable broth, or you could use chicken broth, kind of whatever you have on hand. For the seasonings, to give this some great flavor, I'm adding in a tablespoon of dried basil, two teaspoons of dried parsley, and a teaspoon of oregano. Give this a really good stir, and I let this simmer covered for about 15 minutes. After those 15 minutes of simmering, my house was smelling scrumptious. So now I just added in my cup and a half of smaller pasta noodles. I'm going to let these noodles cook for about 10 minutes or until they are tender. Lastly, I added in two cups of some chopped spinach, let it wilt down, and then it was ready to serve. This is my bowl of food. I just topped mine with some Parmesan cheese, of course. Like I said previously, my daughter devoured this meal. I love minestrone soup because it really does make for some great leftovers for lunch the next day, and it's a great hearty meal. It was particularly cold on this day, so that called for a soup day. I'm starting out by dicing up my three medium carrots, two russet potatoes, and two medium sized heads of broccoli into smaller pieces. In my large pot, I'm just adding the carrots and potatoes that we just chopped up along with 29 ounces of some chicken broth. To give this some flavor, I'm gonna sprinkle some onion powder in, give this a really good stir, place the lid on top, and let this simmer on my stove for about 10 minutes. 
While I have that simmering on my stove, I'm gonna take this time to fry up my bacon. So I'm using a total of five to six strips of bacon. It appears as more just because I cut them in half. This bacon is gonna go on top at the end. Back over to our soup, I'm gonna give this a good stir and then add in our chopped up broccoli and then let this simmer again for about 10 more minutes. Now that we have our broccoli simmering, I'm gonna be working on our cheese sauce now. So to this pot, I added three tablespoons of butter, let that melt down. Once it was melted down, I added our third a cup of some regular all-purpose flour. I'm gonna give this a good whisk, let that flour get a nice and golden brown color. So now I'm gonna slowly add in my three and a half cups of regular milk. You do wanna add it in kind of slowly just so the flour doesn't get clumpy. But anyways, I'm just going to let this simmer on my stove for about five minutes, stirring it pretty frequently. Now that our milk is starting to thicken up, I'm just going to sprinkle this with a little bit of some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And then you're gonna add in your four cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Give this a good stir once the cheese melts down. That's pretty much all you have to do. You don't have to cook it any further than that. And then you're gonna add this back into your soup. So add the cheesy mixture into the soup. Give this a really good stir, let everything warm through, and then your soup is ready to serve. This is the finished product. I just sprinkled mine with plenty of salt, pepper, more cheese, and then some of the bacon that we fried up on the stove. I just crumbled it. This came out so, so good. It was a nice mix between potato soup and broccoli cheddar soup. Seriously, 10 out of 10, I definitely recommend. Everybody needs a good taco soup recipe for the fall, so I really think you'll love this eight can chicken taco soup. To the bottom of my slow cooker, I added a can of drained and rinsed pinto and black beans, one can of diced tomatoes, a can of corn, the corn and diced tomatoes both were drained, one can of cream of chicken soup, one can of green chili enchilada sauce, a can of chicken broth, and then for the actual chicken for this recipe, I used a 16 ounce can of chicken. I did drain the chicken, or you could boil up chicken on your own and shred it, whatever you prefer. The very last thing I'm adding in is one packet of taco seasoning, and then you will stir this. This will go on low for about five to six hours. I topped my soup with plenty of cheese, sour cream, tortilla strips, cilantro, and cherry tomatoes, but you could top your soup with seriously whatever you love. I really do think you'd enjoy this taco soup. It's so simple to make. We're going to be making one of my all-time favorite soups, this creamy sausage tortellini. I'm going to be chopping up my veggies first, two sticks of celery, three carrots, and one white onion. Now that I'm through with that, you're just going to brown up one pound of some sausage in a pan. I'm just using mild sausage, but you could use sweet sausage, hot sausage, whatever you like. Now that it is cooked, I drained out all of the excess grease, and then you're going to add the sausage to your crock pot with all of the veggies that you chopped up. Next you'll be adding in your broth. I chose to use vegetable broth for this recipe but any broth will do. A tablespoon of some Italian seasoning, some salt and pepper just to your taste, and then about three cloves of some garlic. You're going to stir this all together, plop the lid on top, and cook this on low for about seven hours. Now that the cooking time is over, you're gonna add your cornstarch slurry in, which is a fourth a cup of cornstarch and a fourth a cup of water mixed together. Just add it to the soup and then you're gonna add in your half and half. I used about three cups of half and half total, but you could use more or less depending on your preference. I'm going to cook this on high for an additional 20 minutes. 
After those 20 minutes of cooking, you're going to add in your 12 ounces of some frozen cheese tortellini, give this a really good stir, and then you're going to cook this for an additional 10 minutes or until that tortellini is cooked. So now this last part is optional, but I am adding in four cups of some fresh chopped spinach, and then I'm going to stir it around until the spinach wilts down. Now it's ready to serve. I just served mine with some fresh Parmesan cheese on top. This is one of my family's favorite soups. It's just so hard hearty, delicious, and flavorful. Okay, we're gonna be making this loaded beefy enchilada soup. So in my large pot, I have a pound of some ground beef, and then I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of some of this taco seasoning to the ground beef, and one diced up white onion. I'm just going to cook this ground beef completely through. Now that my ground beef is through cooking, I'm just adding my one cup of frozen corn in, a small can of green chilies. These green chilies are gonna add a ton of great flavor. One can of drained and rinsed black beans, 10 ounces of some red enchilada sauce. Use any type of red enchilada sauce you like. A can of some diced tomatoes and three and a half cups of some beef broth. I'm going to stir this all together and cover it and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. Now that my soup has finished simmering and it has thickened up a little bit, I'm going to be adding one fresh lime in. That's gonna give it some extra flavor. You could also add in some cilantro and that will also give it extra flavor. I gave it a stir and then this is my bowl of soup. I topped mine with some extra lime, tortilla chips, cheese, sour cream, and avocado. This enchilada soup is so, so good. Even my little daughter loved it. It was particularly cold on this day, so I wanted to make some beef stew to warm up to. I'm just going to dice up a half of an onion, two medium russet potatoes, and three carrots into smaller pieces. Over to my crock pot, I'm going to be adding in my two pounds of some beef stew meat right now, along with all of the veggies that we just chopped up. On top of those veggies, I'm going to be adding in 14 ounces of some crushed tomatoes, a fourth a cup of some Worcestershire sauce, two bay leaves, two cups of water, some salt and pepper, and then you're gonna to wanna to add in about 16 ounces of some frozen green beans. I did give this a little bit of a stir and this is gonna cook on low for about seven to eight hours. After this was through cooking, I removed the bay leaves and gave it a good stir. This is my bowl of soup. I just served it with a toasted roll on the side. This is such a yummy beef stew recipe. My whole family loves it. And then I really like how simple it is to throw together. Now I really need to show you how to make this classic slow cooker chicken noodle soup. So to begin, we're going to start on our vegetables, just cut them up, one white onion, four large carrots, and then three stalks of celery. I added all of those vegetables into my slow cooker. The next ingredients you'll be adding into your slow cooker is eight cups of chicken broth. For the seasonings, add in two bay leaves, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, and then plenty of salt and pepper. Give this a really good stir. The last thing you'll do before it starts to slow cook is add in your two large chicken breasts. This cooked on low for about six to eight hours. After that cooking time, remove your chicken breasts and then either shred them on a separate plate or you could cube the chicken kind of like whatever you prefer. If you want cubed chicken or shredded chicken, go ahead and do it up at this point and then add it back into your slow cooker. The very last thing I did was add in eight ounces of large egg noodles. I do have my slow cooker on high at this point. After I added them in, I gave this one last good stir, put the lid on top, and I let this cook for about 10 minutes or until my noodles were nice and tender, and then it was ready to serve.
This slow cooker chicken noodle soup is such a great recipe to fall back on. It is a really simple chicken noodle soup to make. My family really enjoys it, especially my little daughter, Brinley. I have so many more videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.